and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, Yay. relax, take that midweek break, and talk mm-hmm. about all the fantastic things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin Stone. That is Jill Bryant and one Yay. Pedro Mateus. <laughs> Hello. Together with you. Pedro. We form, hey man, it's Wednesday. Let's talk about Linux. Ultron. Ha. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? Um, It is another fantastic week. Uh, we have quite a bit of a show to cut through, but Jill, you got a gang of stuff that I can kind of see in the notes there. Oh, right. Yeah. Steve's home and you're bugging <laughs> yes. him. Right? You're like, hey, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Steve, <laughs> Steve has been his home on vacation for most of the month of December. Yay! He's worked like literally the last three and a half months with with only like one or two days off, so it's well deserved. And he's he he is uh, building a model kit right now as we speak. <laughs> well, uh, so. during my stream yesterday, I saw the BB-8 bits. It's like, oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> that that is going to be a very very cool submarine, a very modern submarine. <laughs> well, I know so Steve was when jamming it's about. And he's like, yo, man, Pedro, you should stream <laughs> this. You should stream that. No, not the Wiffle Ball Bat. And I'm like, yo, Steve, you should yeah. stream You're making some models. <laughs> Oh, yes. It, yes, I've even talked to him about that. And Steve so. was like, no, my job is to complain to other people who are doing things. Yeah. <laughs> it is my response, nay, my sole duty. Yeah, there he There's is. There's so Yikes. few internet critics. So, I mean, Steve's providing a very important role. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, and I also wanted to congratulate, congratulations again to our very own Matthew Commandon, Strikecore Strider, creator of Lutris, for being rewarded an Epic Games Mega Grant. Yay! We are just so proud of you. And Linux Gaming would not be where it is today without Lutris. So that's a thing. And everyone wish him a happy birthday because his birthday is tomorrow. He's going to be okay. so old. <laughs> <laughs> so with a lot of you, um, Steam had a sale. So I was like, you know what? Uh, video game? Nope. Video game? Uh, nah. Hey, would you like to buy another $5? Ki- well, this one wasn't. Mm-hmm. This one was $5. <laughs> Didn't need it. I mean, this one works just fine. <laughs> so I bought it. And there it is. Ta-da. Um, I know a lot of you, I, I was looking in Discord, uh, we were having, all sending in our pictures of like, it arrived, I know Empty's arrived and it looked a bit diseased, it looked like his was in the top in the back of the warehouse. Mm-hmm. So, but it's got a lot worked. of sun and a lot of dust. <laughs> right. So yeah. for $5, five pounds plus shipping, why not? Let's have another one laying around. Yeah. Not the most interesting thing. <laughs> most interesting thing. So, I want to make a video mm-hmm. about getting Devil May Cry Five up and running because when I see something mm-hmm. like this, is all Pedro was like, "Yeah, I thought nope," and you know, you went <laughs> yeah. through like following the guides for it. So it's got the Dunevo. I can never say it. No. Denuvo. Denuvo. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Locked me <laughs> out of the game. Mm-hmm. I bought the game on Steam. Registered <laughs> to my Steam account. So I'm flipping back and forth between Proton versions and Proton GE, working on a very, like, I got it down to like two steps to get it up and running for everyone. Went to launch it. It's like, you can't play. Click here. Why? It's like, you can't play for 24 hours. You've been very naughty. (laughs) (laughs) I I didn't know what to say. Yeah, man. It's like, that's what I get for buying the game. Womp, womp. (laughs) So that's my story. Sticking to it. Let's compare apples and gnomes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's out. It's there. Dude. Yes. Um, we got to talk about wow. that because, uh, you know, people mm-hmm. are starting to get their hands on the Librem 5 and this enterprising young lad did as well. And mm-hmm. he kind of walks through like, what is it really like out of the box? You know, kind of having some idea of what was going to be shipped to him and, just straight up, he's like, hey, man, you got to know this. You're not going to be able to replace your current smartphone with the Librem 5 as it exists today. Kind of want to underline that. He says it is solidly built. There's minimum wiggle in it. And it's like, that's good to know. And really surprising, the software, it's serviceable. You know, he's like, yo, the input lag with this critter, it's about what you would have expected with like a Nexus 5 running lineage. 
However, we got to talk about some of the other things, some of the not so good things. The first one being power management is non-existent on it right now. So keep that in mind. Also, not that you would ever use it. You can't really make calls on it because the audio is not routed to the speaker. That's the word I was looking for. Um, <laughs> yeah. Important, you know, in a phone. Yes. <laughs> also, your selfie game is going to be a little bit on the weak side. Camera doesn't work as of now. And when we're talking about a device that's 15.6 millimeters thick, 150 mm-hmm. millimeters tall, and 75 millimeters wide, it is, in fact, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. See, that this, is a chunky boy. This, look yes. at this. This, this. this looks like, okay, you know, this is a first gen device. It's not bad. We're looking at, go watch the video version. Even down to here, you know, you're looking straight on. Okay. All right, I'm down with this. I might pick that up. Still looking good. Okay, back's mm-hmm. not bad looking. Then we get to the Pay for that shot. and Ooh. away we go. Yeah, look at how um, thick that is. Wow. Let's go with the screen protector. If you need a mental image, because I know most of you are listening to this, it looks like, and I get to say this non-ironically, welcome to the end of 2019, it looks like a modern foldable phone. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's half an inch thick. That yeah. that's how thick that is. <laughs> it's a chunky boy. <laughs> it looks like it's as thick as a bar of soap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, definitely. So, um what's what's really nice though is that the Librem 5 uh, the first impressions seem to be very positive about this initial birch batch. Or at least from several other articles I I read that Librem delivered exactly what they stated. And you know, that's that's a really good thing. It was very very positive. So, um now that, you know, people are getting to test them and review them. Now maybe the media will be quiet (laughs) about their releasing. (laughs) I mean, they did put something out, but yeah, it is very much the first version that's been put out there. And the uh, Mm -hmm. person who wrote the article is like, yeah, I have a Google Fi data only SIM and I'm getting 130 kilobits per second. And uh, there's no 4G to be found <laughs> anywhere. So, uh, yeah. That, yeah, this yeah. is not the phone you're looking for. Might not be basically. the phone. Well, <laughs> if you bought into this, if you bought into this correctly, you're like, hey, man, as long as I get something, I know this is going to be beta. I'm going to play with mm-hmm. it. And it's going to get better. It's going to get progressed on. If you were expecting a fully baked device, you got other problems. I wouldn't blame yeah. um, Libram, but you know, <laughs> Libram punched this up way too much with expectations or like mm-hmm. versus what they actually shipped. And that's on them. But hey, it is out there. It is a thing. And that's kind of brilliant. So, mm-hmm. Pedro, let's talk about the leadest of elite hackers. Yay! Those who run Cali Linux. <laughs> Yes, and now they can disguise themselves mm-hmm. to pretend that they're not uh, running Kali Linux. And uh, yeah, version 29.4 was released last week, and uh, one of the selling points is that it comes with an undercover mode, which uh, disguises the uh, now default XFCE desktop as Windows 10. It it actually does a very good job of looking exactly like uh, Windows 10 um, 1903. And it's... Um, well, that it uses that theme that's been out there for a while, so that's fine. But something tells me because this th- this theme has been out there for a while, but something tells me that the package that they use to do all of this in like a double click will be making its way out of Kali very very soon because there are a lot of people out there who don't mind you know the look of Windows and they're running Linux there so it can look like windows that's fine and it'll stop a lot of people asking questions Mm -hmm. so (laughs) yeah no it's uh yeah very Hmm. very well done yeah you know and i i thought since uh uh, the other uh, penetration testing and security focused os tails looks like windows xp so why not uh, Kali Linux. It makes sense. And they did a more modern version of Windows, <laughs> which is nice. Mm. But this makes makes total sense. <laughs> I guess it does in a way, man, because you know, to mm-hmm. me, nothing identifies you as a non-threat harder than the Kali desktop. So <laughs> at, at least I would yeah. maybe suspect you of being slightly malicious if you had Windows 10. I'd be like, oh, you might be up to something. <laughs> um, 
I want to say some of the best features in this release is, as you mentioned, XFC desktop, which is the best desktop. Mm -hmm. um, and it ships with kernel 539. But also, also, ladies and gentlemen, Microsoft <laughs> going to sue somebody over that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, these themes have been around for a while. So yeah, I ages. Know, <laughs> why, why do you hate humor and fun, Pedro? <laughs> and it wouldn't be the you know to your point it wouldn't be the first time that uh, microsoft microsoft has actually sued somebody for uh having any kind of windows looking thing show up on say a video or a stream microsoft <laughs> yeah i would say something about having the joke explained to you but we need to talk about firefox <laughs> <laughs> yay so firefox 71.0 has been released with some very important new features. Um, one of the biggest updates on Firefox is that there is now native MP3 decoding I'm not on Linux. Support for Sailfish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so uh, it has a native MP3 decoding on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS systems, and which is really cool because the patents on the existing MP3 technology have expired. So yay! Now uh, it, uh, Firefox doesn't have to use a GStreamer and other video decoders to play MP3 files. So very, very nice. And it has a new kiosk mode aimed at enterprise users, which can be launched with dash dash kiosk flag at the command line. And this that has been a very much nice needed. Touch. Yeah, that's a yes. very nice touch. <laughs> Yeah, very, very good on you, Firefox. And this will open Firefox in an immersive full screen mode suitable for customer facing displays. So this is very, very good. Hmm. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> yeah, kiosk mode was one of those things that uh, Chromium has always had it, uh, at least as far as mm -hmm. I can remember. And um, back in Portugal, um, one of the things that I did was actually set up a self compiled version of Chromium. Uh, that had basically all of the Chromium branding removed and replaced with the companies uh, that I was working for at the time. It just had their branding. And yeah, it, it basically just launched into a kiosk mode and that's how they deployed like touchscreen. Think like the full TV sized Microsoft Surface, but it was all mm -hmm. Linux based and yeah, they, it's proprietary. Uh, I'm still technically under NDA for it, so I can't reveal much more than that. But yeah, mm. I, I used Chromium a lot. <laughs> that yeah. is kind of neat, man. You know what? On behalf of everyone doing video conferencing and stuff like this, can pretty please, pretty please, just give me an option to disable that Annoyatron with WebRTC. <laughs> No one likes it. Yes. I know somebody there is like, no, this needs to be there. Then the rest of the team's like, but everyone like an option to disable like no yes but i i don't care make me jump through nine hoops to get rid of it but that it makes it completely unusable for like shots we can't have that at the time yeah mm -hmm. if you genuinely mm -hmm. want me to become a firefox zealot they're like yes because i was one way back in the day then it got <laughs> slow when i couldn't load web pages on my single core cpu <laughs> um it's better now it's much faster now uh give me support for jack audio and the binary builds uh, most of yes. you don't know what jack <laughs> is nor should you you shouldn't have to worry about it but back to doing web conferencing and stuff like that bane of existence is dealing with mm -hmm. a pulse audio bridge and jack if we could have native mm -hmm. jack support for webrtc but what about pipewire i'd like to do it sometime before 2025 <laughs> Throw that in there. I'll be very happy to tell people yes. about it and use it. Uh, old Mick Torvalds had a farm. E -I -O. E -I -O. E -I -O. <laughs> the growing ag agricultural tech sector can be pricey and ill-suited for smaller operations. These new companies aim to make it free, fair, and more accessible. Man. CivilEats.com. All this is going to be in our show notes. This is a slog throughout open source yeah. is helping i would say you know not industrial farming but small to medium-sized businesses jill mm -hmm. yep. well the, you know this is 
just what the agricultural tech sector needs to get, a, get away from big farming monopolies and expensive proprietary software and hardware. You know, I've been noticing myself a lot of wonderful farming innovations created because of the Raspberry Pi and creating farm OS and unifying them in one place just makes sense. And it it's, works with uh, hardware and software. So this is yeah. really good for those small farms, you know, that, that and, they, and they can form their, their own group using open source technology and, you know, compete against the large monopolies in farming. I know this has been a hu huge issue for years, and I'm so happy to read this article and the innovations yeah, coming the about. The big mm -hmm. one here are the costs because uh, they actually give a few yes. examples like, yeah, you want um, something that'll track like how many acres you've got and what kind of crops they yield and how well they've been done over the past few years. You're paying like $2 uh, per acre per month, which mm -hmm. adds up a, a little bit. Uh, and then um, if you want like a consultant to come and help you and actually you know, handle more of the admin side that can go up to like $10,000 a year. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff there that you could probably easily automate yourself and just have something that would show you that information without having to pay for that person. And farm OS is, um, well, it's Drupal based. You just go to the Drupal website, you download it. Uh, there's a bunch of modules there that so combine money. everything. So much yeah. money mm -hmm. converting Drupal to WordPress. Um, it, it's obscene. <laughs> nah. I'm sorry, that's an aside. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is completely Drupal based. So you download it, you get your own um, instance going, and then if you set it up as a server, if you're uh, technically minded like that, you can absolutely just have this go out to your whole farm and just have a little Wi-Fi post sending out to people's phones so they can actually check on their phones. It's like, okay, this goes here, this goes here, cool. It's really, really nice. And yeah, schematics for uh, tools. Tools are very yes. expensive. And uh, <laughs> there's currently like people like John Deere and the other tractor people who really don't want you repairing their stuff, despite, you know, mm -hmm. you having paid for it. So mm -hmm. this is a very good, you know, basis to get people to start working on things and do it completely open source. That's very nice. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, that's I like awesome. to see that, and it's always good when you know, open source and like organic farming, like to have yes. like another like thing in common other than hippies. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right on with that. So, uh, Pedro, what if you, in fact? have to install seven Linux. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. there was already a way you could do it, but this is a different way, a much simpler way. And well, you can call it streamlined. It is just an SH script. It's called Canolo, which is, uh, well, it's an acronym for Cata uh, Catapultatore Automatico Nucleare per il nostro opportuno Linux Ordinario. Who are you? What have you done with Pedro for speaking good, in Pedro. tongues? <laughs> <laughs> so it's an automatic uh, nuclear catapulter for uh, common Linux, roughly translated. <laughs> uh, and it is, uh, well, it, 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 think of it like a very, very streamlined um, clonezilla that uh, you don't really need to boot from. You just run this script on a an installed system, you point it at some uh, external media or even a network share, if that happens to be the case, and it will uh, take an image. You can tell it whether or not to compress the image, like to say, trim away the uh, empty space, or if you want to keep like 100% integrity and actually take an exact snapshot of what you're currently running, you can do that. And then, of course, you have the very same script that will let you just you just point it at an image and it will deploy it to whatever uh, media you point it at. So that is very nice to see if it works as, as advertised. Mm. That's the big one. <laughs> because, Wait, are you yeah, trying to I imply like... that I shouldn't immediately deploy this? Yeah, because okay. Clodezilla has been around for a while, and I personally much prefer the ability to pixie boot, 
You just pixie boot mm, yeah. a laptop and say you have another laptop with like two terabytes worth of hard drives with a bunch of images for that laptop. Um, and you say, yeah, just put that here and is... it'll do it reliably. <laughs> I'm old mm -hmm. and I'm lazy. Um, is this better than DD? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it uses DD. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just yeah it's a script that does more uh i think by, a good way you know, of putting that is if everything. you just need to copy <laughs> one thing that's going to get you through if you need to genuinely do like an office mm -hmm. maybe take a look at this 100 percent. yeah yeah definitely <laughs> so when you're done with that why don't you reverse engineer your gerbil or flight <laughs> stick or anything like that because this is hidviz a tool for in-depth analysis of usb human interface devices devices communication see it, uh, i don't know grammatically correct hid devices that seems like a hiv human interaction <laughs> yeah yeah it's human tautology. interface <laughs> device <laughs> but, um, uh, this has even got a nice little gooey uh you can play with it. Keyboards, joysticks, gamepads, uh, more exotic things like weather stations, medical equipment, thermometers, <laughs> and blood pressure monitors. Think of flight sticks. No. Um, <laughs> Pedro, this is kind of cool, though. I mean, you, you like those weird flashy dribbles with like, that look like spaceships with 30 buttons on it. You don't need much to build this. C++, QT, C++. Yeah, all right, that's basic. Uh, Fedora, Ubuntu. Hey, they even have a thing for Windows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why not throw, throw them a bone? So yeah. would, would this be helpful in like mapping some of the moon functions in some of your devices? Yes, that is exactly what that is there for, for you to be able to see exactly if you push like a button on your fancy uh, mouse, if it shows up um, and what kind of um, event the operating system registers when you hit that button. I'd, I'd better not push a button, it'll... <laughs> might, might, might stop the show. <laughs> uh -oh. But... Um... One of the things that I would like, uh, which I guess is not the scope of this particular tool, is to say, if it does, if it can actually go in and poke at all the firmware bits to see what it's doing, chances are it could also flip a bit to enable something or disable something, like I would very much like to do with this mouse. Thank you very much, Mike G. Mm. Seriously. Uh, the... Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess they call it HID Viz, and that Viz stands for visibility. So yeah, yeah no flipping mm -hmm. around of bits, unfortunately. Hmm. <laughs> right on. That's yeah. pretty cool. Maybe something you want to play with after you're done replacing Windows. Wait, hang on. You got a couple things in for the. What do you want to say about the mice, yes. Jill? You got a few things. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So um, I was just gonna uh, bring to everyone's memory. Remember that reverse engineered USB driver for the VGA to use. B device we talked about two weeks ago. Well, HitViz is perfect for that. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it'll very much help if you have a, an obscure uh, bit of um, human yeah. interface devices. Uh, yeah, just poke at mm -hmm. them, see what they do. Mm. Now, can I install yes. Windows 7? Yes, oh, can, <laughs> we can replace but, uh, it. That's even better. If you're, yeah, if you're a Vivaldi <laughs> user, chances are you may have heard that they're saying maybe you should use Linux, which I, for one, am absolutely behind. But then again, here yes. I am on Yay. Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, so I'm a bit biased. <laughs> but yeah, it is a good suggestion. And Vivaldi, they actually, they do a very good job of, in a very simple uh, article, it's like, yeah. There's less hardware requirements for you to run Linux on that old um, computer that you have. It's very easy to install. It's just a better experience all around. And you don't need to worry about viruses as much as you do with Windows. So it won't be for everyone. Obviously, they do uh, give that a mention. But like the whole post itself from Vivaldi is actually mm -hmm. not bad. That's yeah. That's a very you know, tiny and very well uh, constructed article. Yeah, I appreciate definitely. it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and gosh, uh, you know, it's it's it was a great article from Rivaldi, which is one of my favorite web browsers, which all of us are using right now. Um, I'm using for show notes. <laughs> so this is awesome. But um, I'm actually going to put this on my list of articles to have my students read who are moving over to Linux. Because it was just, it was a short read, um, but thorough 
and uh, simple and a good read for the average user. And I like the fact that he talked about how, um, um, you know, Linux is no longer that OS that you have to know command line for. And, you know, he was letting his, you know, the users know that that Linux has come of age now, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's, that's it, it's just a really well done article. I liked it a lot. Enjoyed the problem with these articles. <laughs> Here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, let's be honest, the type of person that is still running Windows 7, absolutely not the type of person that would be able to install Linux or any other operating system for that matter. I'm mildly overgeneral. I know. Overgeneralizing. <laughs> but barely. <laughs> barely. <laughs> it's just there are those people who are still running Windows 7 because they outright refuse to run Windows 10 despite having the knowledge See, to actually very, work around yeah. it. Everyone focuses on that, but that is the infinite minority, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like, yeah. It is a ones. very small. Yes. <laughs> They're extremely small. And, you know, we had these people with Windows XP. They all eventually went to Windows 7. And they're like, we'll never yeah. move again. They'll go to Windows <laughs> 10 because that's all they know. They're like, I have nowhere else to go. It's like, come over to Linux. But I, no. Ah. And <laughs> yeah, that that's the thing. Uh, most people will end up running Windows 10 and or just, That's you know, get a new laptop. Be it. I will say one word of advice. This is um, something I don't see people cover when they write about Linux and like switching to Linux. Your focus, your goal, your mission, should you choose to accept it. You need to learn how to use Linux, not a distribution. It's not Windows. You know, you're not learning the differences between Windows XP and Windows 7. Learn how to use Linux. Learn the commands. Yes. Learn to install drivers. <laughs> Learn to build a kernel. I know that sounds like crazy sauce right now, but mm -hmm. little er mm -hmm. programs, learn to clone a git, but that's pro. No, it's not. That's how you use this operating system. Yeah, I do have a problem yes. with people going, no, it needs to be more. It's not Windows. You need to learn <laughs> the operating system. Once you do that, you walk into any distribution, you laugh, then you make it do what you need it to do. Case in point. Hi, Debian. <laughs> As I'm running the latest and greatest kernel with all other types of weird, un well, it's all necessities, bizarro moon stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. How about we just run Darwin? Remember when that was oh, a thing? It's not dead this yet. Is, oh, this is, <laughs> yes. So true, Ben. This is cool. This is pure Darwin. This is a community project to make Darwin the open source operating system developed by Apple that um, Mac OS is built upon more usable by providing bootable ISOs and documentation. And the closed source elements Next of up. Mac OS, yes, <laughs> including the Cocoa framework and Aqua um, graphical user interface are not included. So the classic window maker user interface is included instead, which is based off the Next Step window manager after Apple purchased Next in 1998. And I actually still have their their uh, first uh, uh, beta. I still have Darwin, uh, pure Darwin Xmas running in a virtual machine on one of my machines when I when I played with it in 2008. It still was on there. It was <laughs> really cool. And the they're they're coming out. They just come out with a new version. Actually, it was it was last year, and they're still working on it. Uh, pure Darwin Darwin 17.4 beta. But it doesn't feature the full GUI or display server, but it has better driver support than Xmas and can be booted in VirtualBox for testing, which makes it a lot easier for test testing. So it's actually, this project has actually come a long way. And their next step, of course, is to integrate the X server and Window Maker. And I was, you know, I had installed this project, um, ran it immediately because window maker is still my favorite all-time favorite x window manager and i live in that next step open step and GNU step lifestyle it's a thing i have probably window maker installed on over half these machines in here <laughs> <laughs> so i just i just love it and i i really think this is an awesome project because and it also uh helps helps the general public know there is a lot of open source aspects to mac os and this can demonstrate that. And it's it's just really neat to be able to run all those open source bit, bits from Mac OS X. Just mm. awesome. 
That's pretty <laughs> cool. Pedro, do you have any thoughts? Uh, mm. Not really. I just got very distracted by what's happening in Discord right now. Mm. Uh, the... Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> Open oh. source based <laughs> Mac OS is always an interesting thing to see, and it is uh, it's good to see that it's there's still some people out there uh, that actually care about Darwin and you know what it technically spawned. But yeah, it's um, you want to talk about people clinging onto dead operating systems? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm reporting well, a I bot was... right now, so you guys go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, next one is uh, well, it comes from Z ZDNet. Jill, take it away. <laughs> yeah. So here is a nice, nice list of the best Linux gifts to buy in 2019 from Stephen, our friend Stephen Von Nichols. Um, a few of these we've talked about last year here on LWW, but of course, one of the obvious ones is you can buy a Tex for your loved one or friend. And um, I have my text from Zaw Reason right over there. And um, there's the link in the show notes. Uh, but there's other, you can find uh, texts on Amazon and um, um, Etsy and other locations, uh, Cafe Press also. And um, you can also give uh, gift your friend or family member a pass to one of the many upcoming Linux conferences like Scale or Linux Fest Northwest, and there they can get tons. <laughs> uh, Yoo-hoo! They can get tons of free Linux swa swag, including T-shirts, stickers, hats, flash drives, mugs, speakers, tux plushies, and other goodies. There's a ton of Scale swag behind me. And a lot of this was free, <laughs> so <laughs> so that's what happens when you go to open source uh, conference. And you know, there's just so many cool things uh, you can get for your loved one, um, and some of it can be free or you know inexpensive. <laughs> Remember, people, <laughs> it is very important. At least once a year, show someone that you love them this much money. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Put a price tag on how much you love them. That's right. That's the way to do it. And if you're going to do it, head over to our store and show them that you love them this much money with penguins because we got some new stuff. Well, a new stuff because it is the season to hail Santa. We do have the new Hail Santa 2019 t shirt for the internets is out and it's available. You can get it any Yay. color you want. You can also get a pillow uh, as long as it's in. That's my what I assume Christmas green is. I'm not sure. And of course, <laughs> yes. black. We have hoodies available. And that helps support the show. And it's not crazy overpriced because I see these things, man. People want like 30 bucks for a t-shirt. F that noise, man. We'll do 1921 mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Not trying to do any extortion, but the mm -hmm. best way, Jill, to support yeah. what we do to keep us loud, keep us live, keep us independent, commercial free, and just full of nonsense like we normally are, <laughs> is to become a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. And I hear that we got a new one. We suckered one in. Yes, we did. Uh, <laughs> Nova, who is who is a, a close friend of mine from the Southern California Linux Expo. And we actually interviewed him here on LWW on um, number 176. Mm. And I interviewed him from the floor of Scale 17X. And that was awesome. So make, make sure to stay listen to that. And he's just he's been very active in Discord. And it's just a joy to have him. And, uh, Hi, Nova. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Nova's been That's one thing you can do, man. We do have um, IRC, mm -hmm. course Twitch. We got a little private, not really private. I mean, anybody can come in if you become a patron. That's like our chill place to hang out the other six days of the week. You know, I saw Nova. It's like, hey, what's up? I'm working on this thing. And today earlier, I saw uh, Matthew Okoma, you know, the dude from Lutris. He's like, I'm going to pick an LTS fight. I think Pedro started it this morning. He was like, ooh, well, to be somebody fair, said yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got a screenshot of Strider getting called out on Twitter. It's like, ha ha, oh, Popey yes. called out Strider right, in right. like the nicest way possible, but he totally yes. called him out. Pedro, you were just instigating. You were like, ooh, let's see how this plays out. I'll check back yes. at lunch. Um, <laughs> it is kind of fun. You do get access to some um, early access. We don't really do paywalls and stuff. I got a new video uh, that is out for Patreons. If you're Yay. into like, podcasting, audio production, and all that, I'm doing a couple of these. This one is going to be covering, uh, well, it does cover that 
hum, a ground loop in your recording. That can drive you up the wall. I knew I fought that evil demonic critter for a long time, covering what doesn't work, the snake oil that mm. people try to sell you, that even in the comments, like, this works perfectly. What doesn't? And two things that are cheap, under 20 bucks cheap, that will absolutely murderate that problem for you. So that'll be out. Also going to be doing a thing for the Devil May Cry Proton. That'll be out a little bit later. Oh, something I do want to mention is we did update the Amazon affiliate page thingy for the internet. So oh, yes. cool. if you go to Amazon, <laughs> we got the... I'm just saying, man, it, we, we can't say the sponsors. Us. We just All I can say is Amazon would be really angry if we did. Uh, <laughs> so, That's fair. Yeah, right? But uh, tap dance. We have U.S. hamburger ejectors, <laughs> UKT, Canadian hockey sticks, bratwurst from Deutschland, and French cheese trays. So basically, this just tells you that if you see a link like that on the site for anything that we may receive financial compensation for anything purchased after clicking through on that link. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which there. is something that you're probably aware of if you've been watching us I long enough. No, but I'm trying to be like legit. <laughs> I'm like reading the okay, whole fair. thing. And I'm like, God, uh, and what it's me reading things. It's like, how can I get around every single thing in here? Not because it benefits us, but it's like, that'll be fun. That'll be a fun thought experiment. How anyway. many qualifiers can I shove into this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me do something that's going to make them change their requirements. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, we're responsible. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls let's bite into a slice of pie something embedded something sweet this something room. that you can put in a box and play some tunes yeah. maybe you can call it a jukebox of jukebox. some sort <laughs> yes and this one is uh, raspberry pi powered obviously uh and as is usual whenever we cover these uh topics well in this case it is just a github repo you just go there you clone it you build it and it they do a very good job in the README of showing you exactly what you can and uh, what you should be doing with this thing if you're trying to build something like the phony box. Uh, and yeah, it is completely like RFID. So you don't need any buttons. You don't need anything. You just boop an RFID card uh, like he's using right there. And then it'll play a playlist or a specific song or play a specific... Um, audio bit whatever you set it to do and that's that's actually awesome it's like yeah no mm -hmm. buttons on the outside it's just a box with some speaker holes cut into it nice why does it have sonos <laughs> on it as somebody who has a, probably an <laughs> embarrassing amount of sonos speakers it doesn't look like that yeah no uh but it does have its own uh built-in um well, it's not built in. Uh, it has a dedicated sound card because, well, yes. if you are going to be playing audio, better make sure that it is playing at the absolute best that it can. And mm -hmm. uh, if you go down at the very bottom, you actually have the shopping list of everything you'll need. And uh, yeah, there's the, um, the let's see, Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus. All right. I've heard <laughs> good the, things about that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the HDMI yeah. over um, HDMI and it's got... It's a three and a half mil to stereo HDMI audio converter. So you can route the audio out through that or say route the audio in through that from another oh, system. Oh man, you missed it. You could have said through DAC and out DAC. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay. And you can, you can use this to listen to all your favorite podcasts, including L LWW and LGC. So um, what I was really impressed about is the community around around the phony box. It's so active and, and really fun. Uh, they put out a yearly calendar they produce and the fun creative builds people have done to create their own phony boxes. Mm -hmm. And it was just really fun to go through some of them. There's one that looks like, like a... Um, a kind of a 3D diorama of a, a, a Tron uh, cycle map. <laughs> that was really mm -hmm. cool. And then, of course, there's your vintage radio ones. And I was thinking vintage this might be... Radio, like from the 80s? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> one to make to make it look vintage. <laughs> Is it over 25 and, years old? Then yes. <laughs> yes. And then there are some that were, where people built it into old uh, uh, vintage uh, boom boxes and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. from the 50s and 60s. So that's cool. And I can see this used, uh, people using these at restaurants. It's a, a much cheaper option 
than the other jukebox uh, options out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as a former restauranteur, uh, don't do that. That person will show up in your restaurant and threaten to sue you into oblivion because you have to pay an exorbitant license to play music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Play those licenses. BMI and ASCAP. <laughs> <laughs> then you start just playing local yeah. bands because you're that yeah. nice. Yep. <laughs> okay, yes. maybe you know a local band that we should get a hold to. You can get a hold to us over at linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact. It's there. It's kind of easy. we got a drop down box. Pick the show type something. That didn't. If you're trying to send us some information that includes links, mm -hmm. read. I'm going to leave that second part on you. If you don't read, well, our spam golem will say disparaging remarks about your mother. No one wants that to happen. Maybe you do. I don't know, mm -hmm. man. I'm not your boss. <laughs> so we got a big, big one this week from Predator 8-Bit. Who wants to take this? Pedro? Yeah, I'll take it. Ooh. And um, yeah, it's talking about Waylon. Hello. About a week ago, I started playing with uh, Waylon again. But unlike before, I picked Gnome Shell to test with. Usually I run XFC and test Waylon on Sway or other Waylon specific DEs like Wayfire and Leary Shell. Uh, the almost everything works statement is true. And I did mention that on the previous uh, podcast. But for me, it's only minor things like graphical login screen, GDM, and PAVU control crashes if I adjust the volume levels on an output device, both of which I can work around using the command line a bit more. So far, no games uh, popped up that I couldn't play, maybe because I'm on AMD with the open source drivers. I hope that in five years, uh, even more niche cases will be covered by Wayland based mm. solutions. Keep up the good work. Ouch. Big honking life hack right there. <laughs> Intel or AMD graphics with Wayland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. have to deal with the um, ongoing uh, pissing contest between NVIDIA and the rest of the Linux world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's like chicken before chainsaw and all that fun stuff, but it's Wayland. You know, I don't want to, but I got, I, I got a gut feeling that... This is going to be the state of whaling 10 years from now, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe not 10 years, but five, yes. <laughs> like, well, let's yeah. not go that far. <laughs> <Five>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Half of that far, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit better. I don't know. The movement, I'm, I'm just not going to say against good enough. And on the gaming side, if you get AMD, it's a serviceable thing to play with. Um, mm hmm I will say this is somebody who has uh, made questionable choices to have like production systems in their home that they can't play with, can't run it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, not even a thing I begin to tango with. I mean, it doesn't work in production. So good mm -hmm. for you. Joel, what are your thoughts? Oh, um, well, as far as the gaming goes, I think he's, he's right about the AMD and, and Intel, because I, I have recently uh, tested Wayland under AMD uh, with the Mesa drivers, and it, it, it did work really well with the games. It's just the NVIDIA drivers don't always work so well. Mm. Um, but what it didn't do well was work, uh, play games on my uh, three monitors, spanning three monitors. I had issues with that under Wayland. Why do you need to play games so on three monitors? That's definitely a thing. Because uh, I like the immersion. Because of the panoramic Doesn't, view. Doesn't like not having the same size three monitors jack that up horrendously because I have a 43-inch monitor like you do. And my other monitors yeah. be them 28 inches. That That's a little sliver. Well, <laughs> no, but oh, see, here, here's what you what you do. My my previous setup oh, was three thirty inch monitors. On one monitor like a normal person. <laughs> no, that's what you but, do. Then you get to use no. Wayland. <laughs> so here's what I did. I have my forty three inch <laughs> monitor, and I'm almost done setting up my two 30 inch monitors in portrait next to it. Almost. So it looks like it's continuing. Yeah, I've got my third one. Have third, you been doing I just it finally with your got my feet. What's taking so long? <laughs> <laughs> I just got my, my third monitor stand. So <laughs> and getting it set up. In fact it's gonna be set up in the next week. I'm so excited. I've already got I've already been playing games with the forty three inch and one of my thirties and in uh Portrait. So, so you're gonna have it in portrait, so you're cool. gonna have some weird bizarro moon resolution that's not gonna work. Yeah, it does. For games. It does work. I make you, it work. Yeah, if you, yes. you have to tell the game to be a specific 
window size. You, have to, you gotta go into the configurations, Ven, whether it be <laughs> Unity or Unreal. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I thought you were gonna get around to the point where I have to waste a bunch of my time to play a game, and you've succeeded 100%. Yes. Oh, yeah. It takes time. I've written articles on how to do it, in fact. I'm sure you've written plenty of articles on how to waste time, but speaking of time, we gotta get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're gonna roll the credits and play that in music. We'll see you next week. I mean, I can see the irony from here. Just saying. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, speaking There's, of uh, uh, resolutions. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> All of our lovely executive producers are Theron, M. Fox Dog, MT, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbrempt, Aldius, Aplo, Mac Geek, Scott. <laughs> Mac Geek, Scott. <laughs> Woo and our producers, and Jupiter course, Broadcasting, Dementor, so Mike, many. Renald, Lutris, Renee, Steven, uh, the Sildat. Uh, Steve, <laughs> Evandro, the Steve, Steve the uh, Joel, Steve. Steve. No. <laughs> I really Dirty question Eve. people's intelligence every time Linux they try to Sorceress, <laughs> Vert Nog, uh, Kai Linux Cast, Nova Frank. King. Frank. We love you all. And here's our our fine upstanding cannibal wall. <laughs> Steve-O, uh, Lutris, that is out Dan, of though. Erod, John, it's retro. Mr. It's vintage, Red. Pedro. It's vintage. Yeah, Shut we up. need to put... Need to, yes, it needs a, a Don's inclusion. A, a you Don can't M. tell because you're not looking at it on three monitors. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs>